Welcome back, and we're going to continue to explore computer mo or security models and frameworks. And in doing so, we're going to uh, dig into the topic of access controls and some of the principles uh, behind access controls. Well, let's start off with the definition. So access controls are going to regulate uh, users uh, entering into uh, trusted areas. It includes both the logical access as well as the physical access into uh, either the information systems or facilities. So it's not just limited to one or the other. And it's actually going to use not only uh, policies uh, to uh, do this, but technology to do this. So uh, you're going to build some policies around how folks can access information or access facilities. You're going to build some technical controls uh, that are going to control uh, access to either information or to facilities. In doing this, there's some underlying principles that you need to consider uh, for <coughs> access control. And let's look at those now. So the first one is this idea of least privilege. And that is you want to build your system so that everyone is always operating with least privilege. That means that they have the minimum amount of privilege to do the authorized task that they're supposed to, to uh, do. And so uh, you're authorizing them with the least limit. So if you're going in and you're editing a Word document, do you need to log into the system as a system administrator or log into the system as a super user with special uh, access? And the answer is no. You need to log into the system as a user. And so the fact that you have those permissions doesn't mean you need to be operating at that permission level when you're doing routine tasks because what it does is it opens a window of vulnerability that you could be attacked when you're using those heightened permissions. So the idea behind least privilege uh, for access control, and it's a principle, is always be operating at the least privilege. On your Windows machine, for example, you could be logged in as a normal user or as an administrator. And again, for most normal tasks, you're sitting there watching a YouTube video you don't need to be logged in as an administrator to do that. Log in and be operating as a normal user. The second component is called need to know, or second principle is called need to know. And that is you only need access to the information uh, required to accomplish your task. And if you don't need to know, there's no reason to share the additional uh, information. And so, again, this is another one of those ideas that, that uh, controls access to information and the systems is to make sure do you need to know Johnny's password? Probably not. Uh, uh, there are some people who might need to know it or, or have the ability to override it, but everybody doesn't need to know that. And so again, if you're trying to protect access, what you want to do is make sure people have the information they need to accomplish their job, but do not have access to information uh, that they do not need. All right, the third uh, principle that we're going to talk about within access control is this idea of separation of duties. And that is you want to have a separation of duties so that significant tasks are split up and there's more than one person responsible if it's truly a significant uh, task. So, for example, if you're going to launch nuclear weapons, you might want to have multiple people involved. Uh, with that. There is a separation of duty associated because that is a very significant uh, uh, task at hand. There are other things that e within uh, all organizations where you're going to do some separation of duty um, because it's a significant task or you don't want to create a conflict of interest um, uh, uh, issue. Let me give you an example. Uh, if, if you're submitting uh, an expense policy, you want someone other than yourself <laughs> uh, approving that expense, expense policy. Um, there's a conflict of interest there, obviously, and there's a requirement for a separation of duty. So uh, access control, again, is built around this idea that there's certain tasks that you want to split up uh, so that uh, uh, there are multiple people involved. So I've talked about three key principles of access control, least privilege, need to know, and separation of duty. What I'm going to now do is uh, go in and talk a little bit uh, about some categories of access control. Uh, these are preventive, 
deterrent, detective, corrective, recovery, and compensating. And what we're going to do is, uh, in, in a uh, slide or two, uh, look at a, a table that talks about how these influence your actions. But before we do that, let's look at a different uh, way of, of looking at this. And in this case, we're going to look at uh, NIST. <coughs> what NIST did is then uh, look at access control uh, categories based on their operational or organizational impact. And so it looked at management, the operational or administrative component, and then looked at technology and the technical component uh, associated with that. <coughs> and so let's now uh, look at that particular table that I alluded to a mere 30 seconds or so ago. Here we have that kind of crosswalk. And what you've got is that management, operational, and technical uh, as the rows, and then deterrent, uh, preventive, detective, corrective, um, recovery, and compensating uh, as those columns. And as you start looking down through those, you start seeing different types of controls that you could put into place that allow you to protect access to information. And I'm not going to walk through uh, all of these, uh, but you should see uh, some of your friends see disaster recovery out there, see separation of duty uh, out there, you see defense in depth out there, uh, ooh, keystroke logging out there as a compensating, you know, for monitoring uh, for that data backups, and some other things. IDS stands for, or IDP is an intrusion detection prevention uh, system. Uh, CCTV, hopefully you know what that is, closed caption uh, TV or, or the, the uh, security uh, TV that you can put into place to monitor systems. Kerberos is a um, authentication system and identification system out there. So uh, the rest of those should be relatively uh, straightforward in terms of uh, what their importance is. The last thing I want to do in terms of talking about uh, access control, so again, you should see a framework here of how you could do access control, some methods uh, by which uh, you could do that. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is some of these access controls, uh, uh, I think obviously, you want to make mandatory, okay? And so uh, what you're doing here is you're going to build some access controls, you're going to tie them to a data classification scheme, and we're going to talk about data classification schemes and models in the next video. Um, and then use these ratings uh, to limit user access to uh, information. Okay, so what we've done during this particular video is we've talked about access control, we've talked about uh, some different models of access control, we've talked about some different principles of access control, and we kind of finished up, uh, well we finished up on mandatory access controls, but we tried to bring it home really on this one table where we uh, linked together um, the characteristics of access controls and then the categories of access controls and then we gave some examples. And this is a great starting point to kind of fill out a table that applies to your company in terms of what controls you want to uh, put into place to implement that uh, within your organization. All right, well I'm going to go ahead and finish up here and in the next video we're going to look at data classification. See you there.